Thank you very much, Narada, for this introduction. May I switch off the light here on this side? I don't know which one to do it. I think this one. Okay. Is it okay this way? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm really happy it worked because basically they expect us to have PowerPoint presentations. This is not something I'm going to do in general. Okay, it's just for those projects. Mentoring, I will begin with a story of mine. This just happened today. And I'm so happy I have this project because basically it's really re related to it. What happened today is for the last three or four weeks, I was mentoring a person. I was helping a friend of mine to get into my company, basically take my, my position because I'm changing my work, work right now. But I was mentoring her all the way to taking this position and she just got it today. So this was the only person I was somehow working with. I didn't work with anyone else. I don't know who else apply, whatever. I mean, there were thousands of people. But the thing is that I worked with her through her papers. I worked with her through her appearance, the way she looks, the way she talks. I told her how she can present herself I told her how she can be more likable, how they can see her in a better way. And today, she got it. She was there, and she got it. I was so happy after it. I think I was more happy than she was. So this is the thing. I was mentoring her for the last three or four weeks, and all of a sudden, it's her success becomes mine. And I was so happy about it. And mentoring, everyone needs a mentor. We need someone to follow. We need someone to look up to. We need someone who can help us, who can be more experienced than us, show us the way, and teach us. Whenever we cannot have the answer, we need someone to tell us the answer. For some people, this is a teacher. For, for other people, this is, for example, a relative, a parent. And for others, it could be also political leaders or, who knows, celebrities. But a mentor is a role model, someone you can really look up to. And for what is worth, everyone really needs a mentor. We need someone to follow. That's why I decided to speak about it. Uh, I just wanted to show you something. Why we need a mentor here in our club, in mm -hmm. mentorship program in general. For the people that don't know, when I was applying and in general for taking part of the elections, in the elections here for the club president, I promise you, for the people that work here, for everyone else as a member of this club, I promise you to organize a distinguished club program and to follow it during the next one year and to get not five but ten out of ten points. We have five now, so I get ten in the end of this year, my term. So the mentorship program is actually part of this plan. We have four big plans. I mean, me as a team with Michal, VP Education, Liga, VP Membership, and Anya. We have four different big projects that we want to organize the program. The mentorship program is one of them. We really want to put a start today on it. And one of the things is that the mentorship survey I gave you before this project began. So I would like to ask you to fill this survey once we finish the project and once you go home and to decide whether you would like to be a mentor or you would like to have a mentor and then just to submit it to me or to Michal. So this is basically, this is the beginning of the mentorship program in our club because we really need it. We think it's useful to have it. And now I will continue telling you why it is useful to have it. Yes? yes. No. If you already are a mentor or you don't need it at all, I mean, maybe you need a mentor or ah, you have it and you, you are already, so you don't need to do it. But you feel somehow that you need a mentor or you want to be a mentor and you're still not. One more thing, you can be a mentor of three people. They say up to three, but I mean, if you can manage more, it's all up to you. So you don't need to have one person and, uh, I mean, to say it's only whatever, as much as you, you can get. That's why we need a mentoring program in our club, because we need our club to develop, and I know it will be developing very fast and rapidly as it did for the last six months or even a bit more. And the mentoring program will just put a start on benefiting from the, in, from the inside. What I mean is that everyone benefits from the mentoring program. This is the mentee, the someone that is taking advices of the mentor, let's say. This is the mentor also. And then it's the club itself. Because we have more members, more satisfied members, and we have bigger retention in the club with the program. And I will tell you how it's going to work. 
who is a mentor first? A mentor is someone, as I mentioned, a bit more knowledgeable and a bit more experienced, but it's not always someone that is here as an advanced speaker or leader. It is someone that really cares about Toastmaster. It is someone that cares about the idea and wants to make commitment to be sort of a teacher for someone and, and his, his or her development. And a mentor can be also someone that is actually a new member, but is feels that this is the place where they want to be and feels that very fast they catch up with everything. So they can become mentor to depends on their experience actually. Because it's not always that old members become mentors to new members. It can be the other way around, depending on the skills and the experience. So I know that few quite a few people here can be mentors for our club. And uh, I really appreciate and I would appreciate I support and encourage you to take part in this program. The purpose of the mentor, we all know, is that the first and most important thing is ease the transition. Everyone comes from the outside and no one knows it. You, you all remember your first meeting. You all know how it is, it's sitting out there and no, not knowing what's happening. Easing the transition between being no one and to becoming a member. No one to the club, I mean, then to Toastmasters and becoming a member. The next thing they do is they find the purpose of joining the club. This is also something else that we are going to do with Michal. Maybe somewhere in the second part of September is planned by me still. But this is something that we are going to meet each one of you. I mentioned it once. And we are going to find out what is the purpose of you being here. This is in general part of the mentorship program. The mentor should meet the person and say, OK, what is your plan? Why are you here? I need to find your reasons so that I catch up and I know what to give you. Another thing is that they help with the Toastmaster educational program. This is something that Michal did three weeks ago, if you remember. This was the first model of the Success Club series. It, he explained that both tracks, this is something that the mentor should be doing also for the mentee. Teaching about the standards and also the club rules, explaining how the club works and all the roles and stuff. There is something else that develops confidence but makes you come frequently and quickly learn speaking skills. And um, afterwards they explain like in a three different separate steps what is one after another. So I will continue with it afterwards. So basically this is what is the purpose of the mentor. And as I mentioned, it's not only for new members. Anyone, each one of you, even if you're an old member, if you feel that you need to develop your skills or if you feel that you need to maybe not develop, but at least improve your skills or anything. You just write down, you say, okay, I need someone to take care of this, I need to talk about this, or maybe you know the person that is better in this field. But each one of us can have a mentor, and each one of us can ask about those things, something else. That's why we have the form, so just fill them in. We are here to help each other, all of us. It's not only one or the other way. The mentor qualities, when I read this thing, I thought, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. There's no one that can fit all the mentor qualities they have in the manual for this project. No one. I thought, if I say all those qualities, no one will want to become a mentor. Because basically, you don't fit. But I chose some of them that I think are really part of the mentorship characteristics. I, I find them that I think they're, they also fit my imagine an Im image of a mentor, and also added a few more that they forgot about, and I, they, they are just part of our club. The first one, of course, is availability. Being available means not that 24-7 that a person can call you non-stop, but it means that you, for example, if you have a mentee, you just let them know that you will, when you will be away, or maybe let them know when you can meet, or something like that. But be available, this is a very important thing to be for a mentor. Another thing is to be respectful. This means to listen to the person and what they think. It doesn't mean that if you are a more experienced speaker or a leader, that you always think the right way. Listen to the person and respect what they want and how they want to develop. Another thing is that to be very supportive. We remember the sandwich approach and the feedback. Even if you're a mentor, you don't go, like, go ahead with the bitch and sell them. Oh, oh. You're not right. No way. You have to be very supportive and you continue the ways you do in Toastmasters meeting. Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable is very important. This also doesn't mean that you have to know everything about Toastmasters and the programs. 
But you go, for example, to Michal, to Iga, they come to me if they don't know the answer. If I don't know the answer, I go to Franek, I go to Piotrek. If they don't know the answer, they go to someone else. So knowledge is within the organization, but the thing is that we never say we don't know. We can always find the information. It's out there. So if we don't know the answer, we just say, okay, give me five minutes, five days, and go ahead with it. Always give the answer to the mentee. Good listener, and the last one is to be concerned. Those are pretty much interconnected, to respect the, the opinion of the mentee and to be very concerned about their problems and remember why the purpose, why they're here and what they want to achieve. I added two things that are for me. And the first thing is that do not forget that this is not you. Don't, do not make the mentee yourself. You don't want them to follow your way. You want them to develop their own way. Sometimes we forget. But it's very important to give them your way and to remember if they don't want to develop as fast as you or they do it faster than you, it's their right to do it this way. Never push too much or too little. There is a balance. And another thing is that we have fun. Here in our club, we have fun. It's a voluntary thing to be here and no one is pushed to be here. So we have fun and we want to make it fun, okay? That's how it goes here. The mentee also has qualities. I wouldn't expect it, but it does. And it's a very good thing though, because if I was to make this presentation, I would have skipped it probably. Eager to learn. What I found out is that actually the mentee, once becoming a mentee, has a responsibility to take care of their roles. It means if you take a role, you come to the meeting. If you don't come to a meeting, let the vice president of education or anyone knows before the meeting or sometime before the meeting. You have to be eager to learn so that we can take care of your educational process. Another thing is to be receptive, but I also added to it, but also give suggestions. To receive what the mentor wants to give you is information, to accept it, of course, but it doesn't mean to accept it as pure truth. Give your suggestions. If you don't agree with it, it's all okay. You just have to meet halfway. Yeah. Another thing is that to be open to new ideas, the mentor is most probably someone that can guide you through more, more to, through situations that he has been already in. So to be open for new ideas means to risk, and to be open for risk. If the mentor tells you, okay, you're open, you go out, I mean, the, the, the door is open, you go out and do it, you go and do it. To be loyal and grateful. Because the mentor is not someone that knows everything and is, the, is God or something. This is also someone that is learning and you really have to be loyal to the fact that they are doing it for you. They give you a hand, but you have to do all the steps by yourself and to be really grateful. The mentor steps one, I mentioned some of the things in the beginning. So the most important thing is to sit with the mentee and to see why they did it, why they're here, what they expect. The next thing is to do club orientation by explaining what, is, what are the internal club roles, like the agenda, for example, who is a timer, general evaluator, and stuff. The next thing is to get them through signing up the application, or at least get them in contact with the secretary and treasurer. And the third thing is to get them through the icebreaker, which I, I find the most difficult one, because it took me three months for that. But I guess everyone has his, his beginning. The second steps I think you can go into deep is to be, uh, make them aware of resources, to get them more into what they have to learn, like the educational tracks, the programs, and then how it goes, the website and the membership zones and everything it goes into deep. To provide them feedback, but again, not only negative or only positive, both of them. Explain their responsibilities in depth, which also means not already not only the internal club responsibilities, but also it can be club officers and how it goes, maybe they want to become a club officer, and to get them through further speeches. The Toastmaster says that it should be, uh, get the mentor should get them through the first three speeches, I believe, as long as the mentee needs you, I mean, you can always be a mentor. And the third one is even deeper. So you get them basically to a different events, to different leadership institutes, to different uh, contests, and uh, acknowledge their progress all the time, all the time. Basically, this is how it finishes.
the beginning, the middle, and the end until you get them to the point. One thing you will ask, what is it for me? If I'm a mentor, what is in it for me? The first answer is not much, basically. But if you become a mentor, I'm joking, of course. A mentor is someone that gets the bigger recognition. You're someone that gets recognition from the people you're mentoring, from the people that are in the club that you're not mentoring, but you get your mentees to success, and from outside the club. Because when this person becomes successful, they go out and say, this was my mentor and he got me all the way to here. And I'm really helpful. I'm really thankful. This is for the mentors. Of course, it, it is also, it's not only recognition. The mentor is also, has the opportunity through teaching someone to teach himself all the time and to remember how is to give the sandwich approach, the feedback and everything all the way through it. Mentor, the mentorship program is something really important for our club. And everyone of us here really needs a mentor. And we need to give each other a hand because Toastmaster teaches us to be mentors. And Toastmaster teaches us how to give a hand and to help. So really, let's share our experience and let's share our knowledge with everyone and let's help each other get all the way through. It just takes one hand to begin a whole revolution. Maybe I finish with one story. One um, month ago, I think, or less, okay, whatever, a month ago, I got a job proposal. They wanted to move me to London from here. It was just two weeks after the elections here. So the contract was constantly like no coming back. And I went there and I to, for an interview and I told them, okay, I'm not, coming. I can take the position because I like it, but as long as you leave me in Warsaw. Because I knew there is one thing I had to remember. The Toastmaster, I mean the president of the Toastmaster Club, is only one. Once being elected, they cannot be changed. And if something happens on the way, the club is without a president, until the end of the term, it stays without a president. So this is just impossible to replace. So when I was seeing I made such a huge commitment here, what I promised to the club and everything. And then I told them, I'm not coming. So they gave me one more year in Warsaw. And that's why I'm here now and I will be here for the next one year. What I mean is that I don't expect from you to leave your jobs or whatever. I mean, I'm far away from the thought that you make such a big commitment. My thought is that if you make a commitment to be part of the club, to mentor someone, or even to be a mentee. Just think about all the responsibility that's standing behind it and make the right choice.